Hi everyone. In this video, I am going to explain about the calculation of expression for the gate width in a metre coupled monostable multivibrator. So, when the concept of gate width comes, it completely related to the period for which the capacitor charges and acquiring the minimum required potential like cutting voltage. See, there are two configurations we already knew emitter coupled and collector coupled. So, collector coupled we have already seen. So, in emitter coupled, the output of first transistor Q1 is connected to the input of second transistor Q2 ok the output of first transistor Q1 is connected to the input of second transistor through coupling element is nothing but what capacitor this is the main capacitor hero here it is the nothing but when it is charging the state of the Q2 will alter ok so if you see the condition quiescent condition or stable state see stable state for this monostable multivibrator or one shot is nothing but q1 is in off state and q2 is in on state q1 is in off state q2 is in on state when it uh, sorry when a positive going triggering pulse see here this is the circuit diagram of the uh, emitter coupled monostable multivibrator when a positive going triggering pulse is applied at the input of this base 1 base of the q1 then q1 then comes into on state q1 comes into on state then the current will flow through our capacitor and then this one and this is the path for the current to flow when the q1 comes into on state after the application of triggering pulse okay so during this period what happens capacitor charges this is the charging path so capacitor charges charges up to v gamma because after reaches the v gamma the second transistor comes into on state again so stable state now apply triggering pulse apply triggering pulse which is nothing but a positive going triggering pulse which is not a, nothing but a positive going triggering pulse yet base of q1 then what happens then capacitor c charges capacitor c charges now we should know what is the charging path and how the capacitor is charging c this is the VB1 previously it is in off cutoff cutoff is nothing but a very low level voltage and whenever a positive going triggering pulse is applied here positive going triggering pulse is applied then this particular base to emitter is having a minimum required voltage then the transistor comes into on state so there is a sudden drop in the there is a sudden drop in the voltage VB1. Okay. So, this particular voltage goes down and the capacitor. See what happens later. Capacitance is having a current flow. So, capacitance slowly charges. This is the charging path. Slowly charges. And when it reaches V gamma, this there is a small spike. Capacitor actually tries to charge up to VCC. This is the maximum voltage VCC. But when it reaches V gamma, it comes to the input of the base of Q2, then Q2 comes into saturation level. So again, it goes to the saturated voltage. Okay, if you take VB2, not VB1, it is VB2, base of the second transistor Q2. Okay, so now we are going to calculate how much is the period for the capacitor to charge up to V gamma. This is the gate width. This is the gate width. So, this is VBE sat, VBE to saturation voltage. 
it is also vbe to saturation voltage this is the place where we are applying the triggering pulse this is the instant at which we have applied the triggering pulse whenever a triggering pulse is applied so what happens q2 comes into off so there is a sudden drop in the voltage from here to here vbe to okay so this particular capacitance charges charges and when it reaches v gamma this is the output waveform now this is the width so gate width can be defined as we can see we can define we can define gate width is defined as is the time at which the capacitor charges and changes the state of q2 changes the state of q2 okay this is the meaning of gate width now so expression for the gate width expression for gate width so when q2 is in on state voltage across when q2 is in on state nothing but stable state voltage across re is voltage across re re is nothing but the emitter resistance from emitters of these two transistors to the ground n okay so re is we can call it as ven 2 because emitter 2 see uh, name each and every terminal so that you can understand this is collector 2 this is base 2 and it is emitter 2 and here it is emitter 1 this is base 1 and it is collector 1 okay here we are taking in this expression we are taking the ground as n it is given here ground as n so whenever i say ven ven if i say it means emitter to ground voltage nothing but across re okay now so what is the voltage across re ven ven 2 so voltage across re is ren is v e n 2 because the transistor is in on state hence hence v b n 2 0 minus is equal to v e n 2 plus v b e 2 set okay zero here is nothing but suppose if i take the time axis here it is the zero axis zero instant is the time at which the triggering pulse is applied triggering is applied zero is the instant at which triggering is applied just before this instant nothing but no triggering is applied is taken as zero minus just after the application of triggering pulse is taken as zero plus that is the meaning of zero minus and zero plus in these calculations okay so vbn2 nothing but base to ground voltage for the second transistor just before the application of triggering pulse is equal to ven2 plus vb2 set go to that circuit diagram so that you can understand see here from base to ground from base to ground from base to ground how many voltages are there two voltages are there from base to emitter and again from emitter to ground so vbn2 is equal to vbe2 plus ven2 this this is all talking about before the application of triggering pulse because the transistor q2 is in on state and that voltage vbe2 is nothing but a saturation voltage as the transistor is said to be operated in saturation so it is saturation voltage so when q1 conducts when q1 conducts is nothing but after the application of triggering pulse nothing but after triggering is applied 
triggering policy is applied the voltage at collector of q1 the voltage at collector of q1 and hence the voltage at the base of q2 drops by i1 r1 i1 rc1 and hence the voltage at the base of q2 at the base of q2 drops by i1 rc1 because when the transistor q1 comes into on state there is a current flow here i1 i1 rc1 which is applied at the input of this base 2 this is the amount that is this particular drop is the appeared drop across this base of the transistor okay so we can write it as therefore vbn2 after the application of triggering pulse means we are talking about zero plus instant is equal to vb vbn2 vbn2 zero minus minus i1 rc1 okay after the application of triggering pulse there is a sudden drop across the base to ground potential of this q2 as my uh, i1 rc1 so already just we have calculated this amount of which is nothing but a ve n2 plus vbe2 saturation minus i1 rc1 so if q2 did not conduct if q2 did not conduct that means it is in off state then as t tends to infinite vbn2 would approach would approach vcc hence the instantaneous voltage hence the instantaneous voltage at the base of q2 is given by instantaneous voltage is nothing but just immediately after the application of triggering pulse we are talking about is given by vbn2 is equal to vcc minus vcc minus vbn2 just before the application of triggering pulse plus i1 rc1 into e power minus t by tau minus t by tau tau is the time instant for which the capacitor charges so that is equal to where for your clarification tau is nothing but r plus rc1 into c that is vbn2 is equal to vcc minus vcc minus vcc minus vbn2 zero minus oh sorry vcc minus already we have taken this vn2 we have to take VCC minus VEN2. Substitute what is VB2? VBN2. Mm. VCC minus VCC minus VEN2 minus VB2 set plus I1 RC1 into E power minus T by tau. So at T is equal to T minus at t is equal to t minus 
VBN2 is equal to VEN1 plus V gamma 2. Okay. Before the application of triggering pulse, the emitter to the base to ground voltage at the Q2 transistor is equal to emitter to ground potential of the first transistor plus the cut-in voltage of the second transistor. So VEN1 plus V gamma 2 is equal to the same expression VCC minus VCC minus VEN2 minus VBE2 sat plus I1 R1 this is RC1 RC1 into E power minus T by tau okay so if you take this entirely onto the left hand side and apply application of uh, this logarithm on both sides and multiplying the uh, required expression with uh, tau leads to the time instant or gate width t is equal to tau ln of vcc minus vcc minus um, this vcc minus ven2 okay VEN2 minus VBE2 sat plus I1 RC1 divided by VEN1 plus V gamma 2. Okay, this is about the calculation of gate width for the monostable multivibrator in emitter coupled configuration. Okay, suppose whenever you are asked to calculate in any problem, if you are asked to calculate what is the amount of gate width, then you have to take this formula. And generally, uh, you will never be asked to calculate what is the amount of gate width. By giving this time instant gate width, then you are able to calculate or design what are the remaining parameters that the circuit consisting of. In such a way, the problems will generally come. Okay, so this is about uh, the expression for the gate width in the monostable multivibrator in emitter coupled configuration.